following program is a production of the Fairfax Network, Fairfax County Public Schools. Funded in part by the Virginia Satellite Educational Network. Welcome to the MTA studio. I'm Della Kidd. Joining me today is children's author and illustrator, Susan Stockdale. She'll be sharing her ideas about drawing and painting, the writing process, and with a little luck, we'll get a sneak peek of Susan's latest book. Susan, thanks so much for joining us today. Thanks so much for having me. Oh, it's gonna be great fun. Just like a good recipe creates the perfect dish, Susan's books are a mixture of different ingredients. Toss in her love of wordplay and art with a dash of color, pattern, and an interest in nature, and you get a perfect blend of Susan's delightful books. Some of her book titles are Some Sleep Standing Up, Nature's Paintbrush, Carry Me, Animal Babies on the Move, and Fabulous Fishes. We have a great show planned for today. This is a live presentation, so if you want to meet our author, Susan Stockdale, give us a call. Our phone line will be open in just a few minutes. Our number nationally is 1-800-231-6359. If you're calling us locally, you may reach us at 703-978-1636. Susan, a lot of students have been reading uh, your books and they have a lot of questions. Great. So let's get started. We have some taped questions from Suzanne Roberts' first grade class. They're from Wakefield Forest Elementary School in Fairfax, Virginia. Wonderful. They were very curious about you and your books. Yeah. So let's take a look at what they're asking. Great. How did you start writing books? What inspired you to write books? Why did you decide to write science books? How long did it take you to write your first book? Do you like writing or illustrating more? They had some great questions, so let's start at the beginning. Great. How did you start loving books? Well, you know, my mother was a published poet, mm -hmm. and so I grew up going to the library all the time, and she was always reading poetry books to me and books of every kind. And I grew up really understanding that words are to be celebrated and that they're fun. Mm -hmm. She'd make up rhymes at the dining room table, things like, Susie, Susie, strong and able, get your elbows off the table. Shake and shake the ketchup bottle, and that'll come, and then a lot'll. Oh, that just sounds like crazy fun. stuff. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and I just grew up saying words are, words are playful and mm -hmm. wonderful. Well, I think you've probably answered my next, the next question the students had, which was, what inspired you to write books? I think your mom was a big part of it. Yes, and her perseverance. Yeah. You know, she didn't get published right away. She had a dream, and she kept at it, so she was persistent. Good. The next question was, do you like science books? I love science books. I was always interested in animal behavior when I was growing up in Coral Gables. We used to go to the parrot jungle mm -hmm. all the time. We'd take out books about the animals that we'd seen. So I always grew up with an appreciation for nature and for science. The next question is, how long did it take you to write your first book? My first book took me probably six to eight weeks to write, even though it only has 60 words. It takes a long time, lots of revisions for every manuscript. And I believe uh, Some Sleep Standing Up, we're looking at it, that was your first yes, book? Yes, that was my first book about all the crazy ways in which animals sleep. The last question was, do you like writing or illustrating more? Good question. I will say in the beginning, I have to confess, I like illustrating more, but now I like them both equally the same. Uh, Let's talk about your writing process. Sure. I understand our MTA crew visited your studio. Uh, studio. Tell yes. us a little bit about it. They did. They came to yeah. see the sort of the creative process and how you get started. You know, when I when I start wor working on a book, I basically go to the library, take out a bunch of a bunch of book ideas. I look at pictures. So, for example, right now I'm working on a book about birds. I take out books from Audubon, National Geographic, and I take a look at all the different illustrations, all the different kind of birds in which I can feature in my book. Then I sit down and I start thinking about rhyming sounds. I think about, you know, how, what kind of birds I'm going to be depicting. I always use a thesaurus and a rhyming dictionary and a, and a regular dictionary. Those are always the tools that I use. I consult my rhyming dictionary as I'm writing. And then I start actually typing in rhyming sounds. Now, I'm not even thinking about whether there's a hummingbird or a drumming bird or a, or a sandbird or a landbird. I'm just simply writing down things that rhyme. I'm not worried about the factual content yet. So I'm, I do a lot of work with rhyming, and this can take up to, you know, it can take days or actually weeks. And then once I've actually gone through the process of coming up with these rhyming sounds, I go to the library and I start taking out books on the factual information, 
and I actually start writing in, you know, the kinds of factual information for each particular bird. You know, if it's a frigate bird, you know, where does it live? What does it do? Um, so the whole process of writing, and, and this is really the beginning of researching writing and coming up with a foundation on which I'm going to spring off and create the illustrations for the book. It can take anywhere from a week to s three months. It just depends on what the particular project is. So I've always, always enjoyed writing, and now I have to say I enjoy it more than ever. I've really come to just totally embrace this part of the creative process. Then I get help from my cat, Sophie. I have two cats, and Sophie's such a sweetie, and she always sits on my lap when I'm, when I'm typing. She's my good luck charm. And she's definitely not camera shy. <laughs> not camera shy at all. <laughs> you've got some valuable tools as resources in your studio, and you've brought some wonderful things with you to our studio. Share I with have us. indeed. Well, I want to talk a little bit about the process of how I get started when I'm doing my illustrations. You know, I start with my elephant that sleeps standing up. This is from my first book, Some Sleep Standing Up. And then my publisher wanted me to do a double spread. That's a picture that goes across two pages. So now I have horses, giraffes, elephants. They wanted a variety of animals that sleep in this particular way. But really, this is incorrect because I don't have the animals in their natural habitat. So this is my first book, so I made a lot of mistakes, which I like to talk, talk about. Then I put them in the Serengeti in Africa, which is really where they belong. I have my giraffes and my elephants, and boom, I have one zebra. But my research is showing me that zebras actually sleep in groups. So in my final illustration here, I added my zebra sleeping in groups because everything I show my young reader has to be visually accurate. I decided I wanted to make my elephants bigger since they're the largest land mammals in the world. I'm in charge of where the words go. Let's see what the final illustration looks like. In my final picture, some sleep standing up. It's beautiful. I have, see, I've added more zebra. I like where my words are. I don't put the words in. That happens when the book gets printed, but I have to leave a space and indicate to the printer where they're gonna print the words. Very important part of the design process. And I made my elephants much, much larger because they are just the largest land mammals really ended up, and I just teeny tiny detail with a small brush, which is really one of my favorite parts of the painting process. Uh, then I have, for example, an owl sleeps by day and is active at night. My publisher wanted more animals that sleep and share that same sleeping behavior, so I have bats now and I have raccoons, but hmm, couple problems. My research for this nonfiction book showed me that bats and owls would not be sleeping next to one another in the same tree. They, they would not cohabit with one another. So I'm going to take the bats out. I'm in charge of what I'm illustrating, and I want to just keep the owls in. My raccoon is also too close to the trim, which is where this page is going to get cut. You have to think about this when you're designing a page. And my words are in the gutter. The gutter is simply where the pages come together in the book. You never want to put words in the gutter or faces in the gutter. It took me a long time to read that, to, to learn that. In my final picture, first, I've taken the bats out because they didn't belong with the owls. I moved my raccoon up, so I'm not worried about him getting his poor little chin cut off. And I took my words out of the gutter, and here they are in the final illustration. So it's really a very interesting process. A lot of details lot to of remember, detail. and I'm already learning a lot about animals oh in the process, good. too. <laughs> Books can take you around the world, into outer space, and even under the sea. Kindergarten teacher Ellie Euling read Susan's book, Fabulous Fishes, to her students. They experienced a multi-sensory approach to learning by listening to the words, seeing the colorful illustrations, and becoming fabulous fishes swimming gracefully through the water. Let's take a look. Fabulous Fishes by Susan Stockdale.
my fabulous fishes came alive in that kindergarten classroom. <laughs> I, I'm absolutely overwhelmed. That's every author illustrator's dream to see your words, you know, and your images brought to life like that. Unbelievable. Ah, it must be so exciting. Let's talk about the illustrating process now. Once Great. you get the words down on paper, what's next? The next process for me, because I do nonfiction work, is I have to get a wide variety of photographs mm -hmm. of a particular animal, because I need to see what their feet look like, their face, their body. And then I start, you know, the, the process of imagining the environment in which I'm going to place the animals. It's not totally imagined. I have to know mm -hmm. what the habitat is. I have to have all the factual information together. And then that's when I really start the process of figuring out how I want to depict that animal. That's where the artistry comes in, and I get to use my imagination. So that's, that's really a wonderful extension of this whole educating process yeah. of, you know, exciting kids about the, the world of nature. Absolutely. Artistry, imagination, research. It's a perfect combination. Editing is an important part of the writing and drawing process. Let's take a look at how Susan prepares each page for the best, most appealing design. So this is where I work in my studio. What I do is I get a wide variety of photographs. You can see here I have different pictures of the puffin diving on a rock, flying taking a really good look at what his head looks like with the spectacular beak. Basically, I'm just fooling around. I'm thinking, how many birds do I want to have? I think I might want to have one kind of here. Maybe I want to have one here. I know that I want to have one diving. So maybe one is diving this way. So, you know, something like diving like this, okay, with this fantastic beak. So it's very, very, very rough in the beginning. I mean, I'm just thinking about composition. This is simply where I'm getting my ideas down for the general idea I want to head into with each illustration. I do this with every single thing I do for any book. And I can go through 20, 30, 40 pieces of paper for one image. This is my first idea of how I want the birds to be positioned. These two Atlantic puffins are up here. One is diving in the water. Okay, now I'm going to have these on big rocks and I'm going to have a huge wave coming in. And I think, oh, I don't really like that very much. Let me look at this a different way. Maybe I have them on rocks. Maybe they're just on three rocks, one, two, three. And I don't have any, anything in the background except maybe some patterns in the water because I love patterns. Okay, I don't really like that. Why don't I try just one huge rock, just one rock with some wonderful diagonal patterning in it? No, let's try something else. Let's see. Hey, I like this idea. And then I've come up with a wide variety of rocks. I have rocks over on the left that are off in the distance, and I have a few waves that are coming in. And hey, I added three little birds in the sky, needed a little something in the sky. Sometimes you come up with ideas at the very end that really pull a picture together. I feel really good about this. I think this is the picture I'm going to go with. So I'm working right now on a final illustration. So this is my Atlantic Puffin, which is a fabulous bird that lives off the coast of Maine. I haven't done the feet on this one, so I'm going to mix a little orange and a little yellow. It's mixing colors is so much fun. I've got the color that I think I want to paint, but I like to just make sure. So I just kind of, and I kind of twirl my brush around so that the tip is absolutely perfect. You can see where I have paint that I need to cover up. So I'm going to start doing that here. So this is the process I go through. I have many more hours of work on this. I'd say another day and a half and I'll be finished with this illustration. But let me show you an example of one that I've actually already finished. This gives you a an example of how many sketches I did. This is my very last picture. All those drawings to get to one final image. So when you look at a book, what you see in the book was arrived at after many, many, many sketches and drawings. Gosh, there's so much detail and so many revisions. Do each of your illustrations for each of the of your pages of your book go through that process? Definitely. I, I can't imagine any picture I've ever done that hasn't taken at least 15, 20 different sketches, you know, to come mm -hmm. up with that image that just feels just right, that it's choreographed, you feel like this is it. Yeah. <laughs> you have to stick with it, that's for you sure. There's a lot with of it. time involved. Yeah, but, yeah. That's, but it's just, it's part of the, it's part of the grade process. I, I don't have any trouble with all the revisions and all the different, different sketches. Well, you're seeing things grow and develop. It's got to be very inspiring, too. Exactly. Yeah. I'm here in the MTA studio with author Susan Stockdale. Do you have a question? Give us a call. Our phone lines are open. Our number nationally is 1-800-231-6359. If you're calling us locally, you may reach us at 703-978-1636.
First grade teacher Suzanne Roberts also read Fabulous Fishes to her class, where they focused on the rhyming words and alliteration. The students decided to create a book of their own, and guess what? They decided to feature birds. Their book is entitled Beautiful Birds. Let's have a look at these budding artists in action. So what did you think? I'm mm. overwhelmed. I, I just, <laughs> this is just so exciting to see all this come to life. Do you feel like you've inspired? Yeah. It's, it's just the greatest compliment, really. It's, it's a privilege. A, it's a lot of talent. We have their final product here. I have it with me, Beautiful Birds. And um, I understand you're working on a This is unbelievable. Book. Because because there is a coincidence here. I'm working on a book on birds right this right. very minute. Well, I want to share a few pages with you Wonderful. and have your comment. Uh, birds that flash their colors is one of the pages. This is so funny because that is the frigate bird, which I've actually created that illustration already for my forthcoming book. And here is my copy of the of the frigate bird, and it's this fabulous bird that lives in the Galapagos Islands. It's got a big red back yes, chest. Yes, the male. Yes. Normally it's sort of flesh colored, mm -hmm. and it inflates its chest. It turns bright red to attract a mate. So that is just unbelievable. I love that. Another page that we were talking about is birds that like to hide. Here's a great page yeah. from the student book. And here I have um, my white ptarmigan, beautiful bird that actually changes color so that it survives throughout the year by being camouflaged. So in the winter, it's white just like the snow, and then it loses its feathers and becomes brown like the rocky ground around it. Amazing. And another parallel that we have with your book is in this book, and it's all about land birds on this page. Yes, and then I have my crazy ostriches, which are, are birds that <laughs> never fly. And they have huge feet with these two toes. So this is going to be a really fun picture. Well, congratulations to that class. They did a terrific a job on this book. Job. I hope a lot of students out there watching create their own class book on animals. Wonderful. Um, you brought some other items with you. So before we g go further with any further questions, I, I see fabric here. What does yes. this have to do with books? Well, for seven years, I designed fabric for clothing. And I would come up with a design, and then a company would buy it and make it into clothing like. This is a design I came up with. It's just nine mm -hmm. dots that make a square, and they made it into a skirt. And then they made it in different colors because the fabric happened to do very well. So this is called being a textile designer. And the reason I like to show this is that my books are all about patterns. And I really did do patterns for fabric. Mm -hmm. And sometimes when I'm doing an illustration, I almost feel like I'm doing a pattern mm. for a fabric. And patterns are everywhere. Patterns are everywhere. I'm going to stop you there for a moment because we have a caller. Wonderful. This is Sally from Dogwood Elementary. Hi, Sally. What is your question for Susan? What animal did you mostly enjoy learning about? I, well, I love learning about the tiger that's, you know, on soft padded paws, it's going through the tiger, but it's camp through the forest, but it's camouflaged. And I love doing that illustration. It was very, very involved, very, very beautiful face with all those beautiful stripes on it. So I would say the tiger I enjoyed learning about, but I'm, I learn about animals all the time. Every time I pick an animal to do for my book, I have to learn about it. Thank you for calling. We have another caller. This is Noelle. Hi, Noelle. What is your question? Did you have to go to a certain school to do art? Well, that's a oh. good question. I went to uh, Occidental College in Los Angeles, and I was an art major. And I lived in Spain, and for about six months during my junior year in college, I took a course with a children's book illustrator. Um, that was really influential. I never realized that I was going to then go and do children's books later in my life. But that course was, was very, very helpful to me. So um, yes, I was an art major, and I continue to take classes. I was taking a painting class last month, as a matter of fact. So I try to continue learning and getting better at what I do. Thanks for calling, Noelle. I see some framed art that you have here yes. as well. Tell us about it. Yes, I think it's fun to look at what inspires people. You know, when I was very, very young, 
these were two paintings that were just hanging in our living room in Coral Gables, Florida, where I grew up. And I used to stand in front of these paintings. I can remember being five, six years old. I put my hands behind my back and just look in awe at how fanciful and colorful and magical these images were. They're paintings by an artist named Henry Faulkner who was living in Miami at the time. My mother just bought them at a flea market, I think. But these really, really influenced me because later in life I became, became so interested in trying to capture whimsy and fancifulness of any image that I'm depicting. So these had, I would say, of any image, these images had the most influence on me. And it's so great that you still have them. Yes. We have another caller. This is Mandy from Greenbrier East Elementary. Hi, what is your question for Susan? Um, when you do your research, do you get to go where the animals live? <gasps> yes, I do get to go where the animals live. And actually, I went to Belize, um, which is a country in South, uh, Central America, to research my fish book. I went snorkeling with the fish. Um, the guide took my husband and me, we were swimming in the water, and we went over and he pulled back a rock and I saw a beautiful puffer fish or porcupine fish, fully inflated. I painted it exactly the way I saw it. So um, I'm actually hoping to go to Costa Rica next February to look um, at all these various birds that I'll be depicting in my book. So that's a great question. I absolutely try to go exactly where the animals are that are I'm going to be featuring in my books. Thanks for calling. We have some more student taped questions for you. Okay. Let's look and let's listen and see what they are asking for you. Great. Who was your favorite author? How hard is it to make a book? How many days does it take you to write a book? What has been your favorite book that you've ever written? Okay, first question was, who is your favorite author? Well, I love Jan Brett. I think she's fantastic, and I absolutely adore her illustrations. Um, in terms of a nonfiction author, I love Jim Arnosky. I think he does a beautiful mm -hmm. job of depicting information, featuring it in a very clear, concise way. Um, Peter Sis is an author, illustrator, whom I have a lot of respect for. Um, I just go to the library a lot, or to bookstores, and see what's out there, mm -hmm. get inspired by other people. Yeah. The next question was, how hard is it to, to make a book? And you've touched on a little bit about that whole process right. already. But I think what I'd like to say is it takes a lot of patience. Mm -hmm. I mean, you have to say, this is a long-term project. It takes me a year to create my books in terms of the illustrations. A really long time. So you have to say, it's a long project. Have patience. Be persistent. And just go into it with that attitude. One of the students uh, in that set of questions was, uh, was asking you, how many days does it take to write a book? Have you ever figured out days. how many days? Well, you know, one of my books took three months to write. Uh, then I wasn't happy with how I wrote it, and I took all that aside and started again. It can take three, four, five months to come up with the text, which are the words, in a way that make you feel like you've done the best possible job. And the final question in that set was, what is the, your favorite book that you've written? Fabulous Fishes, yes. I have to confess. <laughs> I'm pretty happy book. with it. Thank you. We have Allie on the phone at, to, ready to ask you a question. Hi, Allie. Hi. What is your question today? Why do you choose to write about animals instead of people? I find animals so much fun to research and paint. Um, they just lend themselves to dramatization. You know, if I look at a raccoon, I'm looking at the, at the patterns in his face, or if I'm looking at something like a frigate bird, I just love that big red chest. Animals are so fascinating. And I guess I also want kids to be more aware of nature and what's around them. Um, I also consider myself an educator, so I like being able to bring a subject matter um, to children that I think is you know, something that they really should learn a little bit about. Um, so I, I guess that's why, yeah. Okay. Susan, Dylan is on the phone with a question for you. Hi, Dylan. Oh, what inspired you to be an author? I would say my mother was the best inspiration. I mean, growing up with her, um, typing away at her typewriter late at night, I was so little but made such an impression on me that she had projects that were really personal and interesting mm -hmm. to her. And even if she didn't get published right away, she didn't care. She just kept persevering. I learned so much from that, and I think we, we can all take inspiration from that. If you have a dream, stick with it and try to pursue it. Good question. Um, this is from Andrew. We have an email question. He wants to know, what was your favorite subject in school? My favorite sub subject in school was certainly uh, English. I always loved anything that involved writing, and I loved anything that involved reading. Even you know, in high school, reading about novels and trying to figure out characters, story plots, mm -hmm. that sort of thing. So, but I did also enjoy science a lot, too. Back to that love of nature and, and animals. I believe we have another caller. Okay. Uh, hi, caller. Tell us your name and what is your question today? What is your favorite part about writing a book? 
What is your favorite part about writing a book? I would say now that I'm writing in rhyme, my favorite part is coming up with sounds. And by the way, it's kind of goofy, but when I'm writing, I sit there and I just say the sounds out loud. Round, clown, flat, cat, stripe, spike. I'm not even thinking about whether there's a round fish or a clown fish or a striped fish or a spike fish. I just get all the sounds together. Then I go and I do my research. But pulling together those words, finding alliteration, which is when you have like sounds like the ruby red of a rainforest frog, all those R's together, that thrills me. I absolutely love that part of the writing process. It sounds like you have a lot of fun writing your books. We have Alberto on the phone, and he has a question for you. Okay. Hi, Alberto. Hello. Hello. Um, uh, what, what book are you going to write next? Oh, so I'm working on a book about birds, and it's a companion. That means it goes with Fabulous Fishes, and it's going to feature 21 birds from around the world. It's written in rhyme, just like Fabulous Fishes, but then I have really cool information at the, at the back of the book, which I research um, with organizations all over the country. Did a lot of work with the Smithsonian Institution, with the Natural History Museum, to make sure every single thing mm -hmm. I have in the back of the book is correct. Okay, we have another caller. This is Great. Humberto. Hello, what is your question? Um, what's the title of the new book? I guess I can tell the title. It's called <laughs> Bring on the Birds. Oh, that's a great title. Thanks, Humberto. And I think we have another caller waiting great. as well. What is your name and what is your question for Susan? Hey. Okay. Um, how did, while we're waiting for that call to come in, how, okay, uh, tell us your name and your question. We've got the call ready. Great. Um, what's your favorite type of art? Oh, I think I really enjoy, it's called naive art, um, and I, N-A-I-V-E, and Henri Rousseau was a painter in the 18th mm -hmm. century, so 18, late 1800s, who did these wonderful, fanciful paintings of women in jungles and animals, and oh, I just, I, I was ac actually at the Museum of Modern Art in New York City a few weeks ago, standing in front of his paintings, just thinking, he inspires me so much. Um, I love Impressionist work, too. I love all sorts of art, actually. I go to museums all the time. Mm, what fun. We have Adam calling from Greenbrier East Elementary. Hi, Adam, what is your question? favorite book you wrote? Your favorite book that you wrote? What's your favorite book that you wrote? Okay, your favorite book that I you've think, written. Well, you know, uh, and that's an interesting question because I would say Fabulous Fishes, I loved writing and illustrating it, but in terms of a book, I wrote a book named Nature's Paintbrush, um, mm -hmm. which was a very, very intense writing process. It wasn't written in verse or, or rhyme. Um, it involved a lot of information, and what's sim really tricky sometimes when you're writing a book is you have a lot of information, but in a picture book, you don't have a lot of words to tell your story. It's got to be very concise, you know, shorter sentences, so every word really counts. So I'm always trying to think of, thinking of a way to make it clear and informative and, and concise, you know, not too long. So I would say Nature's Paintbrush from a writing perspective, that was probably the hardest book I ever wrote. Great question, and I love Nature's Paintbrush. Thank one, you. one of my favorites. Uh, Susan, we are almost out of time. This okay. time has flown, but before you go, do you have yes. any bits of advice for those as, as, as aspiring yes. and inspired students and uh, writers out there and drawers, illustrators? Sure, sure. I do, I do. I, I would say, um, first of all, have a great time. Yeah. Don't be afraid to, to make mistakes. I, I make tons of mistakes, if you want to call them that. You know, revisions, I start on doing illustrations. They don't work out very well. I might do 20 sketches until I find the right mm -hmm. one. Um, when you're writing, don't edit in the beginning. Just, just let the words flow. You can always go back and clean your work up later. Um, and know that you can be an author illustrator now. You do not have to wait to grow up. You can do that right this very minute. Thank you so much for joining us today. Thank it's you been a pleasure. Thank you so much. Yeah, it's been fun. Our guest today has been author and illustrator Susan Stockdale. If you would like to learn more about her books, visit her website at www.susanstockdale.com. And to learn more about our programming, visit us at www.fcps.edu slash Fairfax Network. For the Fairfax Network, I'm Della Kidd. Keep reading, keep writing, and keep dreaming. <laughs>